Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio and today I'm sharing with you my animal portrait for April. I've been trying to do an animal portrait each uh, month of 2019 and some of them are, they're just all different styles and different products and different techniques. This one is going to be a paper painting style collage so the entire canvas will be covered with bits of paper that will create the portrait in the background. Completely covered. This project took me about four hours to do and so the video is a little bit longer than usual. Usually I try to keep my videos 20 minutes. This one's 27 I think and I did even cut some some parts out that were repetitive and I just couldn't get it down to 20 minutes because it was too long and so, and I thought that you would want to see the process rather than me bit and piecing it. So some of it sped up four times fast, some of it sped up eight times fast and that's just how it goes. Uh, I'm just drawing onto the canvas to begin with. Um, one of the techniques that I use some of the time when I'm doing a paper painting collage is to do an underpainting. So I'm drawing my bear, I think you can tell now that it's a bear, <laughs> onto the canvas with a drawing pencil and just kind of giving basic shapes. And then I'm going to do an underpainting with acrylic paint, which is an underpainting is kind of, it's not a refined painting. It's very sloppy. It's just trying to get the colors in the places where they need to be so that you can then go ahead and cover all the places with the collaged on paper. And it gives you an idea of where the, the paper should go um, to keep with the composition and the value of everything. So I got out my Arteza uh, set of 24 colors of acrylics. Um, I've had these for a while. They're a good student grade um, acrylic paint. And I'm just uh, using these Simply Simmons brushes, acrylic brushes, which I rarely use. And actually they work really great on this type of a canvas. You know, canvas is, is porous. And so when you're doing acrylic onto canvas, it's kind of nice to have a bit of a stiff brush. And most of my brushes are golden tacklon brushes and they're not as stiff as this. So this is a nice type of brush to have and I can just very quickly fill in some color the other thing that this does for me is that as I'm gluing on the torn paper, there's an occasion where I might miss a little spot and I don't see it because everything is so, um, there's so much color and pattern that I don't see it. But then if I hold it up to the light, I can see that there might be a little spot that was missed. Um, you know, I didn't get collaged paper on it. And if I do an underpainting first before I start the collage, then if I do miss a teeny tiny little spot and there's not paper covering it, you, you can't see it. So that also helps when you, you know, when you, if you want to do an underpainting. So the colors, I'm just basically using um, all the greens, the browns, and a golden, uh, golden yellow ochre type color, and then titanium white and Mars black from the set. Uh, very natural colors, ones that would be found in nature, um, not going for anything crazy at all. But as I put the collage on, the the feeling and the style of the animal portrait will change into more of what I wanted. Oh, I guess I also used a, a warm gray color to fill in. I do have a reference photo and... I'm not going to show it to you because it's not a um, copyright. I'm not sure that it's copyright free. My art is inspired by the photo, but the photo itself may not be. I found it on Google, I think. I don't think I got it from Unsplash, so I'm not going to show you the photo. But it's just basically a black bear in a snowy wood with um, some some evergreen type trees and some bushes. Um, very basic, nothing that's too special. And I'm just just using that to kind of help my eye figure out the shapes as I'm drawing. So then I get out my color boxes and start picking out some papers. And um, these are painty papers that have, most of them have been made on the gel 
press plate, gel plate. Uh, sometime, you know, I did that. <laughs> I keep all my little scraps for stuff like this. I do also have some tea dyed music paper, some actual tea bags, which make really great blenders. Um, you can see me put down kind of a light color, um, a pattern paper, like a text weight paper or, or um, music paper. And then I go over the top of it with the stained tea bag paper and it blends in. You don't see that paper as a, sep a separate piece as much, but it tones down the paper that's behind. So the pattern's not showing as much and the color's not as bright. And I used the tea bags uh, paper for a lot of the blending on the bear just to, so that there wasn't such a harsh divide between a light color and a dark color. Works really good for that. If, if you're doing these natural tones or, or also like grungy tones too, it works great for that. But um, obviously this is a black bear. But black bears are really kind of more brown than black. They do have black hair underneath the kind of brownish hair with uh, with highlights from the sun. And the, the bear is shiny. This, this hair is shiny. And so it does get a lot of highlight coming from the sun. And so it needs to have highlights and shadows. I can't just make the whole thing with black paper because then it would just be a black blob. You wouldn't be able to see what it is. You wouldn't be able to um, get an idea of the shapes if I did it that way. So I'm carefully placing the papers. My papers are, a lot of them are blended colors. Like there might be a little bit of black, a little bit of brown, a little bit of yellow on one piece of paper. I I used ones that I had made when I did a paper painting portrait of a dog for a woman who um, wanted it as a memorial piece. And of course, whenever I gel print, I've got a thousand papers left. I always have way too much. So I didn't have to gel print for this piece because I already had a lot of papers that I could use. And so, yeah, yay for hoarding. <laughs> Of course I hoarded them. I mean, I wouldn't throw them away. I made them for a specific reason. And then of course I have some other papers as well, not just the ones that I made for that dog portrait, but um, I'm just placing them carefully, thinking about shadow, light, shape, and layering one paper over the other. Um, sometimes adding in the tea paper to go over the top to blend in where there's too harsh of a line in between two colors. I also have some interesting stenciled paper that's like a deli paper that has stenciling on it and um, it makes for interesting pattern. The reason, the reason that I paper paint is because I want interest in my piece. I don't want it to be an acrylic painting. If I wanted an acrylic painting of an exact bear, then that's what I would do. That's not something that I'm interested in. I'm not an acrylic painter. Um, rarely, if ever, do I do just a 100% acrylic piece. I'm not sure I ever have. I'm into mixed media. I like to mix up everything. I like to put one product over the top of the other. And when I do collage, I like to have a lot of pattern and shape and interest. And so having, having pieces that have printing on them or have stenciling on them or have interesting pattern from the the process of making painting paper. Sometimes I make a, a gel print and I stencil over the top. Sometimes I put the stencil on the gel plate and I make multicolor prints. Um, this is just much much more interesting to me. It's it the finished piece is just what I love what I love to do and the the look that I like. And so it's just something different. It's not, it's not really a painting. It's not really a collage. It's somewhere in between. It's uh, using paper to create something like paint strokes, like replacing paint with paper, but yet you know, you wouldn't have the little dot area if, if I hadn't used paper. You would It would be some sort of brush strokes. So 
it's somewhere in between. It's it's definitely a mixed media and it's I can't really call this a painting and I can't really call it a collage because um, the definite definition of collage is gluing paper to something, but it's more of using the paper to make shapes and um, pattern in a different, just in a different way. So it's kind of a hybrid, but it's fun. And I put a lot of different layers of paper on the bear. The background, not so much. I mean, there are a couple different layers of paper, but um, less less careful planning and placement and thought in the background because it's not as as important as the foreground image. But believe me, there'll be plenty of pattern in the background too, because I've got to put I've got to put the background on, and then I need to put these branches and and leaves over the top of it. So it's um, it's a process. It's fun. I enjoy this. I really got into it. I wasn't paying attention to anything. And then my kid's like, uh, would you want to eat? Because I hadn't had anything to eat. So he made me some food and we, I took a break and, uh, watched a cooking show and ate food and then went back to this after the fact. So it was for over four hours of footage. And I think that I forgot to film some of it. <laughs> so it may have taken even longer than that with a one hour break in between. A lot of fun though. This is something that I love, something I I come back to time after time after time. I love this process. It's, it's very um, relaxing for me to just sit there with my piles of paper and my gluey fingers and <laughs> just continue to add paper to my piece until I'm satisfied with it. So the bear has a muzzle. I'm filling in his little uh, nose and um, mouth area now with some little bits of paper. The In the photograph, the, um, the actual whole cone of the muzzle was much lighter than the rest of the bear. It was like it was a really dark bear, but then this this face part was much lighter. So I made sure that I stayed true to that, and um, pretty sure it's a black bear. That's I I didn't actually look, but I'm pretty sure it's a black bear <laughs> and a young one. It wasn't it wasn't like an old grizzled bear. It was um, kind of a teenager bear, I think, in the photograph. So I'm jumping around. I'm letting some areas uh, marinate a little bit and moving on to a different area and then coming back and just starting out by filling the entire bear up with paper and pattern and shape and interest. Keeping in mind the highlights and shadows. Yeah, I don't have a lot to say. <laughs> this is just... You know, you can see what I'm doing on the screen. I don't know what there is to say about it. Um, the reason that I decided to pick a bear, I guess I can tell you that. Um, <clears throat> one of my kids is uh, is graduating this May with his bachelor's degree from um, Northern Arizona University, which is up at Flagstaff, which is near Sedona. And when I go to visit him, uh, a couple times we have visited this place called Bear Zona. And Bear Zona is a drive through, and then they also have a walk through area with all kinds of animals from North America. And they have a whole section that you drive through of bears, um, brown bears and black bears, because of course they're, that's what lives up there. And, and it's up in the woods, you know, the, the bears are free roaming. You need to keep your your windows up, <laughs> you know, you don't, you don't want to um, really get so close that they can like reach into your car or whatever. So you just drive slowly through and look at them and they're usually lounging, but um, he's going to move. He's moving to California to get, he's been accepted to a doctorate program. And so I wanted to make him something for graduation as a gift. And I also wanted to make it something that was um, kind of a memory of living in northern Arizona. 
because he's moving to California. So, and this is the kid who likes my art and has a whole wall of all different pieces that I've made him over the years. So, you know, he'll enjoy it. This will be a good gift. So, since I was doing an animal portrait anyway, I thought I would do a bear to kind of remember our times at Bear Zona. And um, plus, they're cute. <laughs> they're very cute. So, that's the reasoning behind the bear. His life will be changing a lot. So, it'll give him a little bit of a memory of living up there in the northern part of Arizona, where it's very different from where I live. Where I live, I. I the biggest trees that we have are saguaro cactuses and um, up there, which is only a four hour drive away from here, is snowy, um, has big, you know, pine trees and tamarack trees and stuff like that. And it's a completely different climate. So if you're thinking of Arizona, you think it's all desert. It's not. There's a whole half of the state that's uh, woods, <laughs> woods and cold and um rainy and snowy and very different from where I live. So now I've started the background and I'm just using different pieces. Um, what I didn't like as I was filling in the background, maybe not so much this section right here, but the, the rest of it is that it started to be all kind of one tone. The bear wasn't standing out from the background. It, it was too similar in tone to you know what was put in the background so um, I ended up fixing that later with a little bit of glazing which is one way you can do that but I want to fill in all the areas I've got greens and browns olive green pine green and then I've got pieces of darker brown that um, I'm making into the branches of the trees on this right hand side it's kind of like trunks of trees and then the top part has some of the the um, more horizontal shapes of the <clears throat> where the the evergreen type trees are sticking out you know they they don't fold down they stick straight kind of almost straight out in a horizontal horizontal pattern but then on the right side, I mean, on the left side is where there are some branches from a bush that is coming in that kind of comes over the bear. He's a little bit behind this leafy bush. So there's kind of two different types of action going on there. But I'm building up the trunks of the trees over the top of the colors that I've layered in there, the creams and the greens and um, a little bit of whites and grays. Um, some tissue paper that's printed with words and it's absolutely for pattern it has nothing to do with the words you I suppose if you wanted to you could read them but I'm not really sure why you'd want to that's not the point it's just the black on the white tissue paper gives kind of a gray um, color and in the picture there was snow on the branches and so it's just giving that kind of green versus white and gray type of an idea. So I'm filling it in carefully, making sure that I don't overlap anything and the bear is in front of the branches. And this is where I cut some out because it's just the same thing, just filling it in. Um, on the left hand side, there was an area where there was kind of a cliff in the background. So I made more of those horizontal shapes, um, like a little bit of snow on some cliff type stuff. And then I'm putting in the bush that's in the front of the bear, kind of overlapping the bear. And I'm also adding little teeny tiny torn pieces of leaf to fill out the bush. Um, teeny tiny pieces take a long time. <laughs> It's kind of a pain, but yeah, the bush had had leaves and I did uh, put a little bit on this side, the other side too, because there's kind of a smaller branch that's in front of the trunks that are supposed to be behind 
that are attached to the the things that are the branches that are coming out and creating the top of the tree. So I'm almost done with all the collage and then we'll see what I did after that. It's pretty much filled up. I also made sure that paper was covering the, the, the around the sides so that this can just be hung up on the wall without putting it in a frame. It's all collaged all the way around the edges. I know you can't see that because you're just looking at the front. So this is where I decided that the bear was uh, too tonal in comparison to the background and I decided to kind of unify all the papers by doing some glazing and I used the umber color uh, and some glazing medium which is a clear acrylic polymer like a paint only without the pigment in it and I just mix those two together and then I'm painting the glaze over all the areas of the bear and then I'll let it sit and then I wipe it off and one thing that 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 I do like about this is as I'm tearing the paper sometimes I have a little bit of a white edge depending on what kind of paper it is and you can see those white edges and they're a little bit distracting when you're trying to make something as solid as a bear <laughs> you know you don't want a bunch of white lines on him um, unless you're going for that but then that would be a whole different thing and so by putting the glazing on and then wiping it off it does darken those white edges of the paper and makes them less obvious so I like that I'm also doing the same thing over the branches um, making them a little bit more unified there was some very definite darks and lights on the branches that um, needed to be a little bit more unified so that makes the bear stand out from the background more and you know kind of pulls him forward, pushes the background to the back. So glazing is a fun thing. Then I added, I had a whole bunch of glazing medium with a little teeny tiny drop, just the tiniest drop of titanium white. And I'm just lightening up a few areas that I think got kind of muddy. Um, Cause I did really intentionally do highlights and shadows with the paper. And then I put this brown over the top of the thing and um, I felt like I lost a little bit of the contrast. So this is super light glaze. You know, titanium white is very opaque. So if you're going to glaze with it, you need to just put the tiniest little bit in with the glazing medium. So that fixes that problem. And then with the excess brown um, glaze that's still on my palette, I just take my baby wipe and rub it in there and just get the baby wipe all covered with glaze. And then I go around all the outer edges and kind of give it a, a vignette look by darkening the corners and the edges, um, you know, just a little bit. It's not that obvious, but it's there. <laughs> so that's the glazing. And I need this to dry, making sure that it's all blended and dry and um, ready for the next step, which is to add some detail. And I'm going to do that with Posca pins, black and white Posca pins, and then uh, water brush, water tank brush to blend them. The Posca pins are an acrylic paint in a pen, so it's it's easy to, to apply it exactly where you want it. And I wanted the features of the bear to stand out more. The eyes of the bear had has very interesting soulful eyes and um, I wanted to refine the nose and the muzzle and just, you know, tighten it up a little bit. So I've put the papers, the collage papers where I wanted everything to be and I could just leave it like that. But I just felt like it needed to have a little bit more refinement. So I'm doing it with the pins. So the Posca pins acrylic paint, but then, uh, before it's dry, I can blend it slightly with the water so that it's not a harsh line because it is a marker. And it just, it gives me a way to get the paint exactly where I want it. I could also do this with a liquid paint and a small brush if I wanted to. But the Posca pin makes it very easy to apply it exactly in the place that I want. And so I like doing that. Um, the part that I did not film 
you'll see in the pictures at the end is that I ended up making some lines on the branches and then I added this little like leafy twirly thing onto the head of the bear which is um, there's an artist that I follow on Instagram and Facebook named Mickey Wild. She's she's from uh, England, I believe, and she makes all sorts of animal portraits. And she always has these like little flourishes and and uh, hand doodled things in her portraits. And they're of course colorful. They're not realistic at all. Not that this not not saying this is realistic, but it is a brownish black bear as opposed to it being pink and you know blue or something. But um, that little flourish thing that I ended up putting on is kind of a nod to Mickey Wilde because I like her her stuff. So I just, I don't know, I felt like I needed it. And I did use a copper pin with that. But that, that part got, did not get filmed. Sometimes I turn the camera off and then I do something else and forget to turn it back on. I think, oh, I should do that. And then I don't turn it back on. So if you're enjoying this animal portrait, paper painting video please remember to give it a thumbs up leave me a comment or question below and subscribe if you haven't already of course you can turn on your notification bell if you'd like to know when there's a new video pretty much every second or third day about 13 of them a, a month so you know it'll let you know if you turn on the notification bell so i am about finished with this um yeah i'm gonna sign my name here at the bottom then I'm going to turn off the camera. Then I'm going to turn it back. Not forget to turn it back on. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> so that's it for me. Bye-bye.